start. Okay, thank you, John. Um, so the idea today is for me to introduce these package idea that I have that I've had for, to be honest with you, it's a little embarrassing, but since like 2019, but I just keep, uh, I don't know if psyching is the right word, but I keep psyching myself out of it. And then, and I just keep thinking, no, it's not worth it. Nobody's going to use it. Stop it. <laughs> then I meet someone, I tell them about the idea or they see my graphs on any of the, the, the poster session. It could be a conference or something that I've used them. And they're like, I could use those graphs too. So you should do this. You should do this package. So I'm like, okay, then I'm going to do it again. So then this is where I am right now. Like I'm, I need to hear feedback from other people to see if this is worth pursuing uh, or if I should just share the code on a blog post or something on how to do, how you can do this in ggplot, right, essentially. So let me share my screen here. Um, okay, let me share the main one. So should be okay so here you can see my screen right yes all right let me see if i can put this in um because i always forget how to make this full uh, go up, up from there there's a like a square button go up from where you just were uh where it says zoom middle of the oh the yeah thing. this one oh yes exactly you knew what i wanted to do okay so then <laughs> it is the i'm not sure about the name because i've thought about all kinds of things but i named it gg activity for the time being because like i said it's an extension uh, of ggplot it's it's what i am envisioning because i essentially use ggplot to do all of this these plots um so that's my email in case you find this interesting and you want to I don't know, help me with the project or <laughs> something like that. So that's my email there. And a little bit of about my background, just so that you understand where I'm coming from, because this is very um, used in my field of work, I suppose. So I'm an ecologist and I have a background in biology and education too, but mainly that means that I get to work with wildlife However, I stumbled upon quantitative ecology and data science, and I never looked back. Like, I fell in love with data. And even though I love, 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 love wildlife, and I will forever be an ecologist, I also like sitting down and just doing these graphs, essentially data visualization. Like, I'm in love with that thing. So, I and I've spent, especially the last year, just doing data analysis. So that's a little bit about my background. So ecologists, we are concerned about space and time and how animals use it. Unless you're a botanist, then you're going to have other, <laughs> other kinds of questions about your plants and things like that. But if we're talking about wildlife biologists, we are concerned about how animals are spending their time. Where are they, they spending their time to? But mostly, to, but one of the axes that we are interested in is the temporal axis. So one way of visualizing this is through activity patterns, which means the frequency of activity of one species, or it could be two species or three or four, during a 24 hour period. We wanna see if they are more active around noon, around midnight, around dusk and dawn, when are they most active? So that um, we can do that by collecting data using camera traps, radio callers, bio loggers, direct uh, observation, but essentially these are the three main uh, ways of gathering the data. So we'll be able to understand when is this species active. Traditionally, if we visualize activity patterns, essentially thanks to one package called activity, um, this is the way that all the papers have presented the temporal patterns or the activity patterns in a graph. So they do an X and Y um, plot 
this is done in this package called activity. And this is how the majority of people presented. I'm going to say 95%, maybe 99% of people. But there are a few that start tinkering with ggplot and then they do graphs in a different way. But essentially what this is telling us or these x, y graphs are telling us is on the x axis is the time, these horizontal plots, I should say, on the x axis is the time um, based on, you can change it, but usually it goes from midnight to noon. So midnight is going to be at the beginning of the x axis and noon at the end, or it could go either way, right? And then the density is on the y-axis. And the density is because think of um, frequency bars. So how many times with a camera trap, for example, how many times did I see a deer, a puma, uh, whatever species I'm tracking, active at 6 p.m., active at noon, active at midnight, active at 6 a.m. And then I apply a... a a kernel density function on top of it to smooth out the um, that the frequency bars, right? So instead of having that um, histogram, I apply a kernel density function so that it's smoothed out. And that's like the line that you see here. So the first graph, what it's doing is comparing the activity of two species. So one of the species, which is this leopard cat, is on the um, using the um, solid line. And then the dotted line is of the other species, the marble cat. Essentially, the same thing is happening in these other graphs. It's always going to be like the horizontal um, plot. And then you can either compare it between two species. You can even compare it between three or among three. And then there's another thing worth noting here, which is the overlap of the activity, which means this gray area, which are the area under the curve where the two curves um, meet, essentially the overlap. So that's another thing that's being measured using another, activity, uh, another package called overlap. And that's what's included here. Uh, with this delta 1.41, and that has associated um, um, a confidence interval. But they don't graph the confidence interval in this plots. Those are not graphed here. It's just the, um, the area under the curve where both curves meet. So what's the problem with that? This is what traditionally has been done so far. What's the problem with that, right? Well, for me, Time is, con well, not for me, in, a, in general, right? Time is continuous. It's not like it stops, like in these graphs. If it's if this is stopping at midnight, it doesn't mean that time stops here, right? This is continuing with, the, uh, with this other line, midnight line, right? So for me, it makes more sense to visualize time in a circular graph because time is continuous, like I said. So currently, the two main packages to graph temporal patterns and the, the ones that estimate the overlap coefficient produce these horizontal graphs. So what if we could do this? This is a simple ggplot, right? But people are not presenting the data like this because, yeah, I get it that it occupies more space because it's a circular plot. But it, at least for me, continuous time makes more, visually at least, it makes more sense to see it like this. So. This is a very simple plot of one of the plots I'm proposing, and I'm gonna go through it in a little bit, but this is a simple ggplot with chord polar that I can either include as a function or just put it in a blog post and say, this is what, how you can do this, right? Because it's this simple. You, The only thing is that you have to tinker a little bit with the data that you have and you have to like sort of mess a little bit with it and then put it here. But that's a simple one. The other one, the one that shows the overlap between the two kernel density functions, it's more involved. So I think this one could potentially be more like the GG activity. And it could be like a geom underscore activity or something like that. So essentially what this is doing is it's not just showing the bars, which are these guys, right? Like this is a, a histogram, but in a circular way. These guys, again, I apply a kernel density function 
to each color is a different species. So to each species, and then you can sort of see not just the line, which is the solid line, right? Which is gonna be the kernel density, but the confidence intervals for each one, which is not shown in the traditional ones, right? Because this is just showing the kernel. But the package does give you a way to um, draw a sample from the distribution, from your data essentially, right? And sample your data in a way so that you can uh, produce the confidence interval. So I don't do that. The overlap package does that. What I did was take that out of the package and put it in a way so that it could look pretty in a graph like this, right? Um, and then you can compare two, three, however many more species. This is, uh, like I said, this is for a paper that is in review right now. And I added silhouettes here on the bottom and I made it pretty, right? But I think that for me, this, I don't know, this is this makes much more sense than the other graphs. Um, the other thing that I can also think could potentially be very nice here in if I decide to do this package is that because with these two things, you can see the overlap, which would be, for example, this area right here, because it's, not, so this is a, a coyote um, being compared with a, with an in Eastern cottontail rabbit. No, this is a coyote with a, a swift, no, wait, what? This is an Eastern cottontail rabbit. Yeah, I don't know why the color looks more coyote, but it's a cottontail rabbit compared with a swift fox. That's what I'm comparing here. So essentially when it's just this guy right here, right? Like it's it just has the color for the rabbit, then that means they're not overlapping. But when they both lines, essentially one is underneath the other one here, that, that's where they're overlapping. So these two species at night, essentially between 10 and 6 a.m., they're both highly active, right? Like that's where the temporal overlap comes in. So if there could be a way where I can also put, because I, I'm already computing that behind the scenes, if you will, if I could put the the delta, the overlap confidence, the overlap coefficient up top here, that could be also super benef beneficial, right? Like visually, then you get all this information uh, that you don't get when you do these other graphs because these deltas, they're not, so it's like this one, right? Like these graphs, they don't have the delta. Someone put this in the title, but the plot itself doesn't include it, if I remember correctly. Um, so that's so that's essentially what I'm proposing. I think this one, it could, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the package. I can just put it in a blog post and say, listen, this is how you do these graphs because these are these are super useful, especially when you start to color things up. Like, for example, this is um, nighttime, this is daytime, or dawn and dusk, daytime and nighttime, and this is there's another um, category of time which is called darkest hour of the night, uh, which is the deepest uh, or the middle of the night when there's essentially the least amount of solar radiation or something like that. I forget the definition. It's usually at midnight, but it could be at 1 a.m. or something like that. So that could also be in a different category that uses the sun calc um, package to estimate those categories. And then um, put it like that, right? Like categorize each one of the colors, but I can show that in a blog post, like I said. Um, so, so, So that's it. That's essentially it, what, I, what I'm trying to do. So I don't know if this is worth exploring, if this is worth not exploring, but if this is worth turning into a package, essentially, or if I should just release it as a blog post. So um, so my next steps, if I do decide to turn it into, an over, into a package G activity or whatever, then I can start making a list of the functions that I need to do, which essentially would be mostly for these guys, right? For these types of, for this type of graph. Um, 
and then seeing how I can combine the functions from these other packages to produce this graph. <laughs> and that's it, you guys. That that's all I have. So um that was that was great for to start with. Yeah. Just to to wrap my head around a little bit more. Do you like do you make these repeatedly? These types of plots? Is this something you would personally use? So yeah. Um, um yes. How many pack um I have presented, let me see, some for my dissertation, for my work in my first postdoc, and for the one that I just that I'm doing right now. So for three different projects, I've used these graphs. So, um, there are at least 10 papers that do activity um activity uh analysis, temporal activity analysis per year, at least. Yeah, but so like just for yourself, it sounds like it'd be worth it to make a package. Yeah. So that's, that's enough in my, you know, that I think that's how you should look at it. And then, oh yeah, other people probably would use it too, mm -hmm. but just make it for yourself, I, I would say to start with. Mm -hmm. um, and then I made some notes. So let me hit enter. Um, okay. That, and you don't really need to read those. I just wanted to, I was making sure I didn't forget to say things. Uh, you were saying that, um, like, I don't think this would be a geom function. And I would make it a plot function okay. because it's doing the whole thing. It's not um, like the only arguments uh. to it would be like the data and a few other things like that. Not you're not building it up piece by piece. Mm -hmm. um, that's semantics. But, you know, geom should be something that you add onto a plot versus this is all the things. Um, I would probably include both types of plots because why not? But, you know, you can start with one of them, but, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it, you know, it wouldn't hurt to also have the single, um, the the kind of bar style uh, separate from the line style. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would also very strongly consider, I, I, it wasn't clear to me which parts of these are kind of directly from existing packages versus things that you kind of wrap together. Mm -hmm. But um, I have myself uh, sometimes made functions that are kind of too all-encompassing. Start with the ones that are just, you know, that are a geom, like that just makes the um, the line with the error bars on it, mm -hmm. make that function and export that. But the, the, the plot function like wraps everything all together. It does the line with the error bar. It does the circular coordinates or polar coordinates. Um, it does, you know, whatever else kind of goes together. Um, uh, like the the day night, um, I could see making a geom that is the bar that is colored by day and night if that's not already all set. Um, so because then your plot functions just are wrapping together other functions. And if people don't want to do it as a, a polar coordinate, they can still use your package for the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Um so that'd be my advice, but I mean, it definitely sounds useful because you use it. <laughs> and so <laughs> like start there. Um, and then I guess the other thing to be careful is uh, uh, ggplot packages have their own things you need to watch out for, mm -hmm. like the style of making them. I, if you've done this fairly regularly, then you're probably, you're mostly there, but like, um, I don't know the the way to make it nice and composable. Uh, you have to be careful with how you build the functions, and that's an, in the ggplot2 book. Mm -hmm. So make sure to consult that and do it the way they advise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's all my thoughts on okay. things. I think they look really cool, and it seems. Oh, oh, that was my other thing is I, I've seen that you are doing like Tidy Tuesday, trying to do it fairly regularly. Yeah, I would like actively watch for can I use my plots for this data set mm. so that so that you give yourself like more use cases that might not be exactly how you're normally thinking about it. Mm. But like, is there some cycle here that I could plot, even though it's not mm. the same wildlife activity that I would normally think of, but maybe there's some, some other cycle that I could try to put onto it. And that just gives you some kind of use cases that are um outside of what you do day to day 
that yeah. you can use as like tests and things like that. Well, essentially, I just need a column or a vector, I should say, that has time, like a time where something. Right. So even so, if it's repeated, right, like two thirty one and then two thirty three or something like that, I just need time. the. Uh, let's see, we've had um, the UFO data set that we actually did twice. Mm -hmm. I think could be fun. Treat the oh. UFOs like wildlife and UFO sightings. Yeah. John um, genius. <laughs> Immediately um, going to start exploring that one. UFO. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, and the the most recent time we did it, I I was doing it in order to play around with putting like day and night on it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I think we ended up posting that. So um, it, it that's why it jumped to mind. Like it definitely fits. We did tornadoes and that had timestamps, and so that might have something interesting. Yeah. Um. Uh. I don't think the Groundhog Day things have time on them. They're only date. So. But I think you're right because I think it's a date time. Called, yeah. I don't so know. So any date. Yeah. But yeah, just I I would say watch out for those as they come and see you know then you have weird test cases that might not work the way you're thinking normally and might find ways that these plots can be cool for other things mm -hmm. and gives you something to kind of use as an ad when you uh post you know when you make your big blog post or whatever about the package you'll have all these other examples of how you can use it so mm -hmm. um i would watch for those and now you know <laughs> the other bonus of having done this is now it's in my head of I'm going to be watching for daily cyclic things when I'm putting together the data sets and make sure that that data is there nice for you so thank you uh, <laughs> thank you so much yes <laughs> yes uh, I think it's the best thing the best like thing I could ever too I could definitely see it um slack activity uh could go on to the same things of like what channels have activity at different times of the day or something like I could see that also being a thing not as much for us but for some mm -hmm. uh communities maybe for us I don't know because then we could have people oh hey if you're a shiny expert shiny tends to be active this time of the day so you should be online to answer questions then mm -hmm. something like that yeah um I think so I could see it for lots of things oh go ahead Nelson yeah Nelson yeah. Not sure, but because I, I I don't know about uh I just tuned in just to, to get a look, but I don't know much about uh, uh, package development. But uh, I'm I'm listening, and I say <laughs> yeah, this last part about activity and Slack channels, or maybe um, the the people's the people of marketing that are looking maybe when there is more hit in a, on a website, or when there is more activity on a um what should I say um in a page or in a community so th that kind of information um yes you you maybe it could be a way to pre represent that data and i was looking at the data and the one that you have the before and what what you are showing i if you shade because when you show the one about the fox and the rabbit if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. um if you shade it between um 10 o'clock and uh, and six in the morning or so ten in the ten in the at night the time that they are overlapping if you shade the background of that part with the overlap it, it I, I think it, it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I you think it it will exactly I, I think it will um stand out a little more but I don't know if that's possible possible or how you can do that but but yeah, I'll explore it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. But, well, I was looking at it and I said, yeah, it seems like the two graphs, the, the original one and with this one, I can see some benefit in having that 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 way of viewing. But maybe it's it will be something that people have to um like uh 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 um, they, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you because they have to be accustomed, they have to, I don't know the, the word. Yeah, uh, they get it, used to. They get to get used yeah. to it exactly. Yeah, the, the way of viewing it, but uh, that that's yeah. the thing. And yeah, no, and I, I I guess it's just an option, right? Because to, people might yeah. still like to plot things horizontally, 
but there's another right. option. You might like circular plots like me. So then, right. There's it. Well, and I I think that this is a a perfect use case for circular plots. Like this is what polar coordinates where it does make sense when you have something that's cyclical like this. So, exactly. yeah. Um, what was oh, uh, but yeah, that all speaks to that's why I would cut pull it out as separate functions so people don't have to do the polar coordinates or they, you know, maybe they can take advantage of the, you know, you could have a function that does polar coordinates that are colored by um, day versus night uh, just as a background and then have that as a, um, a chord, you know, C-O-R-D mm -hmm. function that does chord uh, daylight or something like that. Mm -hmm. that just you know and so that's a piece of all of this i i the more at first i was like well is this just what biologists mean when they say activity but no like i think gg activity does make sense and it is like it is if you are trying to plot activity this package you know like, like daily activity so maybe getting the the, the daily aspect into the name might be nice um the Daily or, or the cyclic, or the, the cyclic is, yeah. or daily. Because yeah. I, I was thinking also about uh, does it has to be a day? Because if you are looking for, yes. for monthly, if you are looking for a monthly, yeah, I'm thinking in my case, I don't know, maybe it's stretching it, I don't know. But maybe if you're looking for um equipment and you're looking for instances um where daily, I don't know, depending on the shift of the workers. I'm I'm trying to to fix something in, in my head, but maybe it's, if something is working is happening every week, and you want to see if the incidents or whatever, I don't know, over a time lapse of a week of a. So my question is: Is it only per day? Is it only for cyclics per day, or can it also be something that's expanded over so a I longer period of time? I've only used it for day activity, but I have thought about this um, for even for seasons, like, like if the exactly. circle is a year, exactly. and then things that are happening always at spring, summer, exactly. Fall, exactly. right? This, and then instead of having zero, one, two, three, then it's month one, month two, month exactly. 12. Exactly. So I, I've never done it, but I've thought about it, like, because time is circular. You're, mm -hmm. if, if, what's the, um, scale that you're using if it's a year if it's a week if it's a month uh if it's a year uh, uh and maybe and maybe it, it doesn't has to be from from january to january because if you are looking for something like a school year yeah. i don't know whatever you want to do with trimesters and that kind of thing so you have a school years and you want to see some cyclic activity for every school year or whatever then it will start um yeah when the school begins and when the school ends so it's not, it doesn't have to be um, January, December, but it can be yeah. a cyclic, a, a one, one, a, a, a period. You have to define the period, the start and the stop. I think you're right. Maybe I'm going to start seeing if there are maybe examples of not just daily activity, but like in another um, time scale so that I can incorporate it into into the function sorry if i if, if, and, if and one thing but, yeah also that what john was saying was about uh, uh doing it for yourself and and also starting because sometimes you you i'm doing functions not in r but but in in, in whatever else I'm, I'm programming it mm -hmm. um sometimes you have a huge function or whatever that you put everything in it but then you see okay but i can take this one out and then you start um cut it in pieces and then you have to, uh, there is that fine line, how much do you cut, how much do you put in a function and how much, because if you want it to be general something, because in this case, like we want to have, instead of daily, we have to pass the periods of time. Mm -hmm. So you have to take care, okay, um, yeah, I have to have a start, I have to uh, uh, end, and then I have to do um, the, the, if it's, so there, there are things, parameters or whatever, you have to pass to the function, and but first things most of the time I think first thing is also have it hard coded have it for your case use case that's daily mm -hmm. see it working get it working and then try to generalize generalize to 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 um break it out the function to be, have it with parameters 
I think most of the time it's easier to do something very specific for your own use mm -hmm. and see it working and then try to, because whatever, whenever you have to do something to make it general, my problem is most mostly with, with, with the users. Whenever I have to take account <laughs> what, whatever another person will be using my function for, I will, okay, I have to think about a lot of, will I put uh, the wrong parameters or whatever. So, and you have to do sanitation. So you have to check the borders and the use case. So <laughs> try first to do something for yourself. And then afterwards, think about the others, how they will use it. Right. And with their feedback, you will get also the information on how, on how to make it better. Absolutely. I would definitely start, you know, like, just start with what you're doing. Like, start with the daily, um, probably just that second type with the rings or just, you know, just the first type or the second type. Do one of those. Get it sorted out. Um even if all you have is the plot function that does everything, because you can always add more things, you know, you can break pieces out and export the functions. It's hard to um, remove functionality once you've, once you have it there, mm -hmm. if people are using it, you can't like take away a piece of functionality that you realize you don't really need because someone will be using it and you'll mm -hmm. get complaints. So I would start with just like do one of, you know, make one function that you will use and then start breaking that up and say, oh, this, you know, for this plot, I need it this way. And for this other plot, I need it this other way. So I don't, uh, you know, I can take this piece out and make it two separate functions that are being called. Maybe they have a wrapper or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would. So backing off a little bit from what I'd say, I said. Do the one case, the thing that you know you would use, make yeah. that. Um, and then you can always pull things out. And and you know, you can have things behind the scenes that you made the little individual pieces, but you don't release those to users. You don't export those functions. Um yeah, but it it definitely seems worthwhile. Um it, like it was not hard to come up with several plots that would be cool with it. So um, yeah, I, I, I say go for it. And I was just doing some looking online and in books and I can't find a, an example of this as a thing that already, you know, is out there. So yeah, cool. I, I look too. <laughs> so there's the activity package, like I said, but the horizontal graph, not the circle. Right. So yeah. Thank you, John. Thank you, Nelson. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. I am so encouraged to continue this little project. Very cool. Um, yeah, definitely, you know, let us know how it goes. And I can't wait to see it in uh, the Our Packages book club because we're going to have a part, I'm sure, where we talk about things that we've all worked on during the club. So no, I'm no. looking forward to seeing it. Thank um, you. Yeah, do you have any other questions for us like so so far you haven't you haven't started this as a package right no no because I, uh, I figured I need I need to get the okay sometimes I'm like that like I need to I need someone to say yeah it's a go it's okay <laughs> it's approved continue before I start working on the project and then someone says no you shouldn't have done that and then I'm like all the time uh, in past that have um, you made the package in the past have you already made a package in the past I've never. No, this would be my okay. first package. And I'm using it as a way to learn how to like go well, through the book because I, I bought the book and I've been reading it. So it would be like my, uh, like the exercise I do after I read like each one of the chapters, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I say do it right away. Even if you end up deciding, oh no, this isn't going to work or I don't want to have to support this or whatever, get it started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you can use it for practice. And uh, I mean, you know, we're already... 12 chapters in so come on <laughs> All right, <guys>. All right. <laughs> thank you guys thank you so much you're very welcome this is really cool all right um all right so I, before we uh wrap up i do want to say that um we have someone signed up next month gus lipkin is going to present a shiny app that he is working on Ooh. um which looks pretty cool and then we don't have anyone for april um that is right around, let me see. Are we presenting in April, even though we have the 
three weeks it's, hell with the spring situation? So March is the three weeks of hell with oh. the spring forward. Um, and I believe, let's see. Yeah, Project Club is the day before um, daily savings begins. So uh, that's it'll be like one of the last meetings before all the clubs have to pause for a little bit while okay. um, Europe and the U.S. and some other places are kind of out of sync. Okay, okay. Um, so then, so that's fine. And then April will also go, and our meeting is the um, weekend right before ShinyConf. And so, if no one else takes that slot, I will take it to practice my ShinyConf talk. Um, so yeah, all right, we are we're good to go then. Um, if anyone you know watching this, or if you Nelson have an idea that you want to put in front of people, um, this was a great example for how it goes that you just hey, this is my thing. Doesn't matter if it's just an idea you have or if it's something you've been working on and you'll get some friendly uh, feedback. So that's what this is all about. Okay. Um, so yeah, so uh, March is set, April is maybe, and then, but we have nothing past that. And we do this every month, second Saturday of the month uh, okay. or sometimes third Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> if the second Saturday comes a little too early. Um, <laughs> But yes. All right. Very All right. cool. I will Thanks. see everyone on Slack. Okay. Bye. Happy Bye. weekend, everyone. Bye. <laughs>